Please forgive the noise in the background of all of these shots. The AC unit is running. It was 90 today, but I still wanted to shoot a video. Next to the new deck, we have the extra pepper plants and some of the tomatoes over here that are were some of the last planted out. There's a few flowers on some of the peppers. They got covered in sawdust a little bit from the construction, but all in all, doesn't look too bad over here. Um, some of the peas on this trellis are really starting to dry up now. Like I said, it's, it was 90 degrees earlier today. And although some of the flowers are indeed giving off peas, I don't foresee these plants living too much longer. I got some basil starts. I got tired of waiting for my seeds and I just went out and got starts from a local nursery and put them in in a few different places and they seem to be adjusting all right. There's some more over there. The tomatoes here in this bed seem to be, as you can see, just chugging along. I think this is a fused blossom, but most of the others look pretty okay. These are Pilsner Vessies. Over here is pineapples, and then those are Amish pastes. I don't, there's a few back in there. I don't know if you can see it. Some more tiny fruits on these plants, and they are continuing to grow upwards, and I'm tying them up the conduit as they go. Over here, deciding to push out in all directions, is the absolutely massive rhubarb. It is, it's huge. Um, and it's just, chugging along so yeah might have might have not been the best place to plant that right next to it are the raspberries that are likewise just exploding they are taller than me they're taller than my dad they're taller than everyone in the house which is saying something because my brother's like six four but yeah they're starting to actually put off flowers so i might actually get some raspberries this year I don't know, it's my first time growing raspberries. I'm not sure how great it'll be. I don't, I'm not even sure what type of raspberries they are versus like first year cane or second year cane. But I'll see how they act this year, look it up and see what needs to be done for pruning and trimming in the years to come. Over here in the square bed, we have the red lettuce hanging on just fine. I really should start harvesting some of that and eating it so that the others have space to grow. Um, a lot, all of the tomatoes are growing up nice and fine. They are reaching kind of the third level of the trellis now. Uh, most of them are. And they're setting off flowers. I haven't noticed any, oh, there we go. There's some fruit on the lower parts here. So that's reassuring to see. These peppers are doing wonderfully. There's a few beans and even some of the carrots from my attempt way back when seem to be chugging along just fine. The peas over here are a little behind the others on the other trellis as far as height and like flower production go, but they also don't seem to be showing the same signs of drying out, so maybe I'll get some more production out of them for longer. And then over here in the last little corner, these are some more beans. I haven't noticed any flowers on them yet, but they seem to be growing up and doing all right, and I haven't noticed a whole lot of pest damage on these, so I'm hopeful. The blackberry bush is magnificent and the one over there is doing just as well and then even the uh the little bush is even next to all the construction is still making flowers making buds and yep there we go first little tiny little tiny berries oh and there's so many there's so many more flowers on this bush this year even just more than there were last year and they're on both sides instead of just one side and like towards the back. So it's the production is definitely ramped up this year. Oh, and I'm pretty sure there's a bird building a nest in the middle there. So I'm not gonna go not gonna go too close unless I have to, but I'm pretty sure a California Toki has been building a nest in this bush. Inside the greenhouse. As much as inside as you can get when there's no there's lots of walls and ceiling missing the peppers in the grow bags kind of 50 50 some are doing good getting big some are very yellow and not doing much at all so I'm not entirely sure there why some are doing it and some aren't uh, the tomatoes around I have recently gone around and even trimmed off a lot of the foliage from even for my determinant plants I've been doing it regularly for the indeterminates but I went and did the determinants 
this week because I was starting to see that a lot of them, like especially back here, are starting to set a lot of their fruit. So because they're determinants, they set their certain amount of the flowers and make fruit. And then afterwards, after this harvest, you know, comes to fruition, the plant will die back on its own. So at this point, I figured it was safe to trim foliage that didn't have flowers and stuff coming off of it because they're there. They're already doing it. They're in the middle of their production. So yeah, that's why I went in to just help increase airflow in here. I've been tying things up to the, uh, the additional trellising on the outside. There's a lot of fruit that is, you know, easily bigger than a golf ball, um, getting bigger every day. And it's, oh, it's so heartening to see. And I've, I've been looking a, a couple nights recently with a black light out here and I haven't seen any evidence of tomato hornworms yet. I'm gonna keep looking, but as of right now, I haven't seen like foliage eaten and I haven't found them under black light at night and I haven't seen any like signs of them. So for right now and going forward, I hope that continues. The, these beds have been both successful and a little frustrating. So uh, some of these peppers are still, one of them dropped their leaves entirely. Um, some of them have put on some new growth. Some of them are turning yellow. I'm not sure what is and isn't going on here. So I'll just keep watering it like I do the others and take notes. This little watermelon, I finally pulled out the radish and the other carrots from here. And so it's really just this watermelon here. And I'm, I'm really thinking about replanting more around because it's been this size for like a month. So I don't know if it's actually going to amount to anything. So I might re-sow around it. Um, likewise over here, one of the cucumbers got dug up by something, I think a squirrel. Um, and then this is the only cucumber left over here. It's put on a little tiny bit of growth, but not anything, especially compared to all the other melons and the other places in my garden that I'll show you. So again, I think trying to do them in these planters in the soil that is here might not have been the best plan, but I'm not gonna pull them. I'm gonna keep seeing what they're doing, but I'm just recognizing that they are the ones that are doing the least good out of all of mine. Uh, the beans here are doing lovely. I haven't noticed any flowers yet, but the growth looks nice and strong. These are the two t potatoes that seem to grow back from the gold potatoes that I had in this bin earlier. I still have a few carrots here awaiting next time I make soup so I can harvest them. I think those are the last of the winter sown carrots that I have. Oh, hello, little bee. The, uh, the green onions all over are flowering, and so are the chives. Um, and then the strawberries. They're doing a lot better since I mulched with rocks. There's a lot more, you know, ripening and they are ripening and not immediately rotting from touching the soil in the pot with them. So I definitely, definitely um, putting down the rocks and then doing the plant food afterwards, I think is really giving them that boost that they needed. And now I'm harvesting at least a handful of strawberries from the yard about every day. All right. I, this is the new, this is the platform left over from Melon Alley and my cucumbers, see, now see, look at these cucumbers. They're just taking off. These are the ones I direct sowed and then uh, the ones I direct sowed and came up on their own through a bit of a cold spell. So they're a bit hardier, I would think. I still haven't, this is the worm bin. I put more soil on top of it. I still haven't direct sown anything here. I think I might be doing a honeydew here my mom wanted some of those and then that cucumber is also doing really well so yeah compared to the teeny tiny thing that hasn't done anything these are just taking off and I'm really excited about them the sunflowers seem to be hanging on okay they're a little munched on but it doesn't seem like they're gonna be throwing in the towel anytime soon oh boy let's talk about the corn so this is the first year I'm growing corn here in zone 9a northern California I'm in Sonoma County with noisy birds. And I didn't know, and I asked around to people around here who have also gardened and they haven't ever done corn here in like their backyard, like organically. So like, I couldn't get a real sense of like what kind of pests I would be dealing with here very well. And it turns out earwigs. Earwigs seem to be a thing. I've noticed them at night crawling all over these things. They've been eating the silk 
gotten the ends of the uh, cobs here on the dwarf corn and they were up here and they were like eating eating into the the little pollen on the stamens and stuff it's i'm not sure if i'm actually going to get any corn off of these because i didn't notice and now like almost all of the silk has been eaten and so i put out uh soy sauce traps and i'm going to try to do petroleum jelly up and down maybe depends on if i can get my hands on it on the uh, larger corn because it has just started to put off its stamens um and I don't, I haven't seen any actual cobs with tassels appear yet, but when they do appear, I'm going to take one of these stamens, I am going to hand pollinate, and then I'm going to try to cover the silk so that the earwigs cannot get at it. Um, I don't know what level of success I'm going to get here. I don't know if the earwigs had their fill of this corn and won't affect that corn. I don't know if this corn is still going to make a cob or not, if it got pollinated before the silk got eaten. I don't know how that affects anything, so it's just going to be one giant experiment seeing how this is going here without putting any sort of pesticide or insecticide on it this year. The grapevine, I have kept twisting them around and they are slowly, they want to just shoot upwards, but I am slowly bringing them out onto the trellis. Um, the There's been some buds opening up over here you can kind of see how they they opened they flowered they kind of let off their little pollen bits and such and now there's little tiny teeny tiny what i think you know those little circles and i think those are gonna be the grapes hopefully and there's a few different spaces with those on it and i've noticed along some of the growth there's a few new ones showing up that are very teeny tiny so hopefully these two bunches aren't the only bunches I'll have, but we'll see. This is, this didn't happen last year, so I'm still excited. The plum tree is getting heavier and heavier plums. That's not a very good shot to show you. Like there's that one there. Um, and some of them, you know, like happens most years, there's some that like, are small and stay small and just ripen small, but then there's others that get bigger and stay green longer until they get bigger, until they get like plum size and they they fully ripen. So, but unfortunately that branch is just loaded down and it is right over the new bed I put here and I didn't calculate for that. So I've put in, I don't know if there's with the wires on, I've put down a net here, the bird netting I had, I set up stuff um, and then I put a bunch of <laughs> ribbons on it so that the birds can see that it's here so it will catch the plums so they won't fall and crush the wonderfully growing plants I have down here. Hopefully I, by the time I can take this off, by the time all the plums are done, that'll be before those need to be up to the top of the trellis where the netting is. So hopefully, fingers crossed, the timing will work out. Down here I've put in some more of the basil. These are the last of the snapdragons that I uh, germinated from the seeds that I saved from last year. There's a lot of volunteers in here because this is, I amended this with the compost from my own compost bin. Pretty sure those are tomatoes. And then that big something in the corner there, it looks like a squash or a melon of some sort, but it, it volunteered, so I have no idea what it is yet. Um, but the squashes I did put here are doing great. There's a cucumber that's doing good. And then that's like, I believe that's a watermelon. And those two are the two other melons and they're all doing a lot better here in this bed so i feel very confident about the experiment you know this is my first year growing melons and squashes so it looks promising so far i haven't noticed a whole lot of pest damage yet the squashes and cucumbers are definitely growing faster than the melons but the melons are still putting on growth so yeah Okay, the long bed. So a lot of the snapdragons are still flowering, just getting taller. A lot of my parsley is going to seed. Uh, I put in some of the basil, it's scattered around, there's one. Um, this is the delphinium coming back. It's not nearly as tall as the delphinium at the other end, it's already up and flowering, but it's, it's coming back. So that's reassuring. Uh, the tomatoes continue to climb. The ones down there are the, uh, the best height so far and they also the ones over there have more little tiny tomatoes than the ones over here uh it might have something to do with the morning shade or it could just 
be variants between plants. Um, over here, we've got more snapdragons. The, oh gosh, are these petunias? I think these are petunias. They're doing, this is like their third flowering, so I'm enjoying it. The, oh, one's fallen over. These are the determinate, extra determinate plants I had, and they are all still putting off new flowers, new growth, so I haven't been trimming these at all. I've just been tying them up as needed. But oh, look there, there's some, there's some tomatoes already showing up over there, so maybe I should, I've gotta tie this up a bit better. But yeah, looks like things are progressing along here, just like over in the greenhouse. Uh, these are some of the best peppers, looking peppers around. Uh, these are the tequila peppers. They're big and bushy and full and not a lot of blossoms yet, but that's fine. It looks like they're putting their energy into establishing themselves first before doing that. Um, I should harvest this soon because this is the same plant and this is going to seed. Um, so I should harvest that one like tonight and eat it. This is uh, romaine and it is also, these are butterhead lettuces. This is the romaine and it is also flowering. So those two need to be harvested soon. Lots of, it looks like slug damage here on my Swiss chard. Um, didn't, I had like one or two good harvests off of there before it started folding to pest pressure. So uh, I think I'm going to let it flower so I can harvest seeds. And then these are the gorgeous delphiniums that came up and this one is really opened up. I love how we, when we first saw it open up, we were wondering if there was just a bunch of black bees on the inside of the flowers, but that's just how they look. It's awesome. Um, and yeah, we've got lots of tiny tomatoes. These are um, Chadwick cherries. Then over here, you can see some of the first uh, Brad's Atomic Freak tomatoes. So yeah, all of, all of the cherry tomatoes along here are chugging along just fine. And finally around the corner, um, this is some of the last of the garlic in the yard. I think I should pull it. And then the beets are also having some pest damage, but I'm not entirely sure. They're still growing. So I think that should be okay for now. And the star jasmine is smelling amazing. The tomato plants, sorry, the potato plants um, seem to be starting to die back. There's brown, curled, dried amounts here, even though they've been being watered. And over here, you can definitely see there's a lot. There's not like new growth being put on. It's starting to dry up. So we should be able to harvest potatoes from this pretty soon. Um, squash and melons over here. Not quite as much growth as in the black bed in the back, but it still is growing. So I'm taking heart. Maybe, maybe just need some additional fertilizer. We'll put some of the plant food on there. Although over here in the same soil is uh, this one melon is doing really, really well. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep watering them, maybe feed the other ones, but definitely, definitely still seeing growth. So I'm, I, I feel like it's very promising. Here in the first bed, the parsley is going to seed. I will take more care this year to actually like save seeds from that so that I can grow them over the cooler winter months and maybe have more success, uh, get more of a harvest before it just goes to seed. The oregano is also getting really tall, which makes me think that it's about to go to seed as well. Yep, there's the little, little oregano flower buds. Um, yeah, the strawberries over here are doing really well. The really established plant is putting off a lot, but even like the little runners that are only about a year old are also putting off not giant fruit, but not like super small. It's been pretty good. And yeah, black boy, blackberries are still going, going crazy with the blossoms and we'll hopefully get lots of berries soon.